Central. You know how fast you were going? What? How fast you were going? I don't know. Ten? Eight. Be advised, this is an explicit podcast, so if you're easily offended, get your panties twisted into a knot, turn this off before you get butt hurt and mad, start to cry, have to run to your safe space. All opinions are those of the host and his guest, and do not reflect the opinions of any government agency. Welcome back to Motor Cop Chronicles podcast. We're in the... MCC Studios, my clubhouse. I have a new and improved stand-in dummy. Dummy number two. I'm dummy number one. Ice pick. So, that's him. And his little friend I put next to him, too. Rover, Fido, whatever y'all want to call him. Hope everybody had a decent week. It's definitely been cold this weekend. And... Like I said, sure, it's getting colder from when I walked outside earlier. And as I get older, I hate the fucking cold. I don't know about everybody else, but I hate it. I don't uh, remember if I told this story last week or not because I didn't have these notes with me. And my production assistant can give me a nod if not. Anyway, I pulled this guy over that was doing... uh. 76 and a 60. It was, wasn't out of ordinary stop or anything like that. I mean, just, you know, I don't like the word routine, but it was a normal stop. No bells or nothing going on. As I made my approach to the vehicle, though, I did notice they had that Nikito sticker on the back of his vehicle. Anyway, like I said, it was a non indescript stop. You know, guy was nice. You know, asked for a break. I didn't give it to him, of course. Anyway, I asked him if he knew Steven Stagall since he, you know, Steven Stagall had that Aikido stuff. And this guy was from New Orleans, and this is where this sticker was out of. My point of this whole story is, especially if anybody listens that is not in law enforcement or thinking about getting in law enforcement, is pay attention to that type of stuff. Because this guy come to find out, once we got to talking about it a little bit, he was, uh, he owned his own dojo in New Orleans and was, uh, I guess, a master or whatever. I don't know what they call them, but he taught Aikido. And he was a very unassuming looking fellow looking at him. My point is, especially people that aren't in law enforcement or younger ones that don't think about it, pay attention to like bumper stickers like that. Uh, it gives you kind of the heads up saying, hey, why would this guy have this on here for just no reason? Just like the guys that wear the tap out shirts or beat to sleep and all that stuff. I got to pay attention to that with their, you know, they might be training in some type of, type of MMA. If you're dealing with somebody, look, look, you know, pay attention. If they have uh, cauliflower ears, <laughs> that means they're no stranger to fighting, especially in the ring. If you do have to get in an altercation with them people, might be good, you know, if you have a heads up to know, because as much as we all think that we're indestructible and everything, uh, we're not. And you don't want to get your ass beat, beat up, knocked out especially, and have your gun taken away from you and use it, use it on you. You don't want to die by your own weapon. I mean, I don't anyway. I don't even other law enforcement person that would. Anyway, like I said, not a funny story. Just a little, uh, I don't know, heads up. Keep it on your mind. Always pay attention for it. I still do, even after doing this for 20 plus years. I still, I guess I got it ingrained in me that I, I'm i always looking for that type of shit. Because just like any, the rest of us that are in law enforcement and stuff out there, you know, when you go to work, you plan on coming back home. You're going to do any damn thing in your power to come back home. You got to keep your warrior mindset your whole entire shift 
or hell, most of us know we keep it 24 7. That's why when we go to the restaurants and stuff, we sit with our backs to the wall and looking at the door and stuff like, like that. My wife finally got used to it. She knows now not to sit because I mean, that's where I'm going to sit. I'm like, you know, I want to see who's coming in and out, and I don't want people sneaking up behind me and shit. It's a bitch being paranoid, I guess, right? Oh, uh, earlier this week, this past week, we, uh, well, they used to see where I work at. We did have, there was a car pursuit that got called out. Me and the tot were heading in that direction. I mean, this was like, shit, like 7.15 a.m. I mean, I hadn't even gotten three sips out of my coffee yet, so you know that fucking sucks when your coffee gets interrupted, right? Anybody likes having their coffee interrupted. I had that delicious vanilla, French vanilla creamer in my coffee that I enjoy so much. Anyway, we heard it bust out of the radio. They spotted a stolen vehicle. We started refusing to stop. They started chasing it. Me and the go back out. We were in our, our units at the time, that early in the morning. Jumped in them, and we're heading towards where the pursuit was. Well, the people ended up uh, sp- spinning out. Uh, they did hit something, but it didn't hurt the vehicle badly or cause a lot of damage. And he crashed out and stopped. We were right there on top of it and get there. The funny part of this is, is they were running the vehicle they were in and they were they were trying to get away. And his pursuit in was a stolen U-Haul truck they had stolen. I don't know about y'all, but that's not really a getaway vehicle, don't you think? My thought was, I looked at the guy, I was like, ain't you glad they didn't get away from you? I said, how embarrassing would it be if you got, if you lost a, a fucking U-Haul truck in a car chase? I would have never wanted to admit that shit. But anyway, I guess if you're going to steal a vehicle and then get in a car chase, I wouldn't let it be a fucking U-Haul truck. That's talk uh think of a lot better vehicles to try to get away from the cops in than a U-Haul truck. Anyway, the two people that were in it, of course they got arrested, transported to jail, yada yada yada. No uh I don't believe there's any property damage or anything like that. So I thought it was funny. I was, when they first called it out and it was like, you know, they were in pursuit of a U Haul truck and I was like, Fucking really they 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 chasing in a U Haul truck? Yes, they were. It wasn't a big, big one. It wasn't like it was one of the tinier ones, but it's still a it's still a U-Haul truck, regardless. Oh, and ladies, oh, ladies, if you have, you know, you have your sexy legs and all that stuff, and you know, you have your sexy legs, and you're wearing a a little dress that's so short that I think if something would have happened and she'd have to lift her arms up just a little bit or whatever, that that her ass and stuff was, would have been hanging out of it because it was barely covering it. Okay, we understand, yes, you have very nice legs and stuff like that, but <laughs> this person was at a funeral walking out after the services, because we were going to escort the servant. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, did she really realize where she, did she realize they were going to the funeral and not the club? Because this fucking dress was so fucking short. It was obscenely short. I don't know if it's today's, it, it, was, a, it was probably a 20 something year old person. I don't know if in today's society, people just don't fucking think about it look in the mirror or whatever but oh my god it was that short I'm just thinking is she trying to find a boyfriend or husband or something like that at the church well I don't know if it worked or not I'm just thinking have a little bit more coots about yourself when you're going to a funeral wear the sexy clothes somewhere else not to somebody's funeral All right, on to the next 
little story. I clocked a truck that was speeding. When I pull out to make the stop, he sees me, of course, because I, I pulled out right where I see he was coming up, so I didn't have to try to chase him down from a dead stop. Well, when he, I pull out off the shoulder of the interstate, of course, at this time, I, I've got to he, he sees and sees that I'm, I'm a law enforcement. Well, he slows down, like to not pass me. So I slow down because I'm wanting him to pass me so I can get in front of him to pull him over. Well, this goes on for a bit. Now, you got to realize we're on the interstate, you know. Speed limit 60, so the average speed is at least 70 or plus, correct? Finally, we dropped, I had dropped down to 35 miles an hour, and he didn't drop back slower. So now we're backing up the interstate drive. Finally, he 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 gets, he goes around, and I get in front of him and pull him over. I'm like, dude, what the hell you were doing? Oh, I was just trying to let you. I was like, I was already out. What's the problem? Oh, nothing. Blah, 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 blah. You know how they do. And then, so, of course, I asked him for his information. After I told him why I pulled him over, need your driver's license. Of course, here it comes. He's like, he said, <laughs> he's like, well, uh, I don't have a driver's license. Ah, there it is. There it fucking is. That's why you didn't want me in front of you. That I mean, in back of you. That's why you didn't want me in front of me. Ah, okay. You got an ID? Oh, oh, oh yes, sir. Here it is. Oh, oh. This person was lit. Texas tag said he was going to Mississippi for work or to move there or something. But, you know, oh, I was going to get a driver's license when I got to Mississippi. All right. Whatever. How many people you pull over? That's like, uh, your inspection sticker is expired. Oh, I was on my way to get it. Okay, it expired, you know, six months ago. But on this one particular day, and I happen to stop you, it's the day you're going to get it. Yeah. Fucking bullshit. And that's what that is. So anyway, I, I, I went back. I ran them through my computer and stuff like that. He, he was clean. And so I wrote him his ticket, advised him, Next time, don't do no stupid shit like that because, it's, I mean, it was obvious. I, I, I knew he something was wrong that he did not want me behind him. If it was just because he didn't have a driver's license, I mean, we can work with that shit. We can work with it, which we did. We did, even though we had slowed down really slow on the interstate before that. Fucking don't do that shit, people. You could have got somebody killed. I did pull over a, a older couple <laughs> in a 2020 Audi, brand brand fucking new car, nice vehicle. Of course, you know, the lady I pulled over, you know, I tell her why. She was doing 70-something, you know, in the 60s. Uh, so, of course, it was living over. Then, uh. Of course, she get she starts well. Well, I I, I, I was speeding up to get over, so because I saw I saw you uh, pulling on to the shoulder. I was like, well, I did not let her go. I didn't say nothing at first, and then you know she gave us this other excuse. I'm like, well, first of all, you didn't speed up and change lanes to because you trying to give me room to pull onto the shoulder since I had been sitting on that shoulder in that area for about six minutes or so. So that was lie number one. Of course, then it was because of eighteen wheeler, and then it was because somebody was telling her she did this lady, and every fucking excuse in the book. So I go back and uh, to my unit. I come back with the citation that I wrote, and now the whole the whole time everything was fine. When I get back to the car with the citation, of course I'm on the passenger side because that's the safest place for me to approach it over here and I hand her her information back with another uh, instruction form options on the citation then I started advising her about the ticket I'm like you know by signing this on admission to guilt you know you can either pay the citation or you have to show up in court on this day yada 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 same spiel different day 
Well, when her husband, who's in the passenger seat, realizes that she's getting a citation, I guess this perturbed him a little bit. He looks at me and says, now, now I'm got the ticket book handing it to her saying you need to sign right here by the exit. He looks at me and says, uh, can you stand uh, farther back six feet uh, COVID and puts his mask on? Now, I'd already been standing here for a few minutes, you know, before and after to combine. And now that he realizes his wife's getting a ticket, he wants me to stand six feet back. Well, well, I'm not no uh, superhero that has elastic skin that can stretch myself out. So I'm like, uh, I said, I've been standing here before, but so as soon as she signs the ticket, I'll get six feet away from you. He just looks at me, gives me a dirty fucking look. So he got his, uh, I'm going to call it the, a COVID ticket. He got himself a, all of a sudden the COVID steps in and he uh, wants to use COVID as an excuse, to, I guess because he got pissed off because I gave his wife a ticket that he realized she was getting at the time. Which is funny, we, if you work traffic, I'm sure uh, regular UP guys get this. Uh, you pull people over there and like, Oh, I'm COVID positive. Okay. That's the new thing to try to scare us policemen away, law enforcement people away. Oh, I'm only going to give a ticket. I'm just going to tell them I'm COVID positive. Well, surprise, motherfucker. I'm not one of them germaphobe scary motherfuckers. I just wash my hands real good afterwards and shit. So people try it. Like I said, they've tried it several times. Oh, I'm COVID positive. Or, or, or they'll say, I'm going to get tested for COVID. I'm thinking to myself, all right, you, you tell me you're COVID positive. Why the fuck you out driving around? Shopping in places. So, aren't you supposed to be quarantining somewhere if you're COVID positive? If you got the, the rice or or something like that? Put your face diaper on and go back home. Give me that damn, oh, I'm COVID positive or I have COVID. You try to get out of the fucking ticket. Next excuse, please. Next excuse. I'm sure if I have any law enforcement people on here, I'm sure they're getting their fair share of excuses as well. So, that's that part of it. Did have, uh, in the news story, I was supposed to read this last week and totally forgot I had it. Also, I was supposed to have a guest this weekend, but but I don't, I don't know if I remember that story, Seth. <laughs> I'm trying to think of it. I'm, so much has happened. You gonna have to remind me of it. And I'm gonna have to tell it at another time because I'm trying to think of it. You know, I got an old brain. I mean, I, so much crap. Anyway, I was supposed to have a guest this weekend, but that guy, Bam, has 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 a, had a hair appointment that ran late. And then they came back and had to finish the hair appointment today. So we had two days of hair appointment that ran later than we expected. So it got stuck with me. No guest. Ho hopefully soon I'm going to have a guest. I ain't had a guest in like a month now or something like that. Which freaking sucks. I'm going to get with you after, Seth. I'm going to have to get reminded about that story. And uh, next week I can tell it. Anyway, I'm going to tell this story. Oh, uh, we can maybe listen to some audio on it first. So let's let me put the audio on it if it plays correctly, and then we'll talk about the story. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. Well, I've been there. I've After been there. The but you got it anyway. Going. You just need the. Because that sucked. Whoops. That's why I'm not in television. I guess. Here we go. I say we go. Officers are on administrative leave facing charges after police say they were caught in a hotel room together 
while they were on duty. 31-year-old Sarah Lodano and 38-year-old Michael DeMelgo were arrested tonight. Investigators say back in October, just after midnight, officers couldn't reach either on the radio or cell phone. They tracked her cruiser down in the parking lot of the hotel. That's when they were found in the room unfit to respond to calls for service, police say. Both are due in court next month. Uh, all right. This happened in Connecticut. And as you heard on that little short news clip, the male officer, Michael, 38, the female, 31, actually they worked the same shift. It's about 12.37 a.m. that dispatch wasn't able to get them on their radios or her, or her cell phone. I guess she was the one supposed to be getting dispatched to a call. They used their, the department used their automatic vehicle locating system. Why don't they just call it GPS? They found the vehicle in the parking lot of the Even Hotel, along with Officer, the other guy, Michael. Can't say your last name. They said the supervisor spoke with the hotel management and learned that they were both in a room at the hotel said the officer's supervisors found the parents out of the room not in a condition to respond for calls of service. I wish they had elaborated on that a little bit because I have, I mean, what, what is that? Were, were, were they just naked fucking? Were they drunk? Were they high? Were they both? I mean, what the fuck? What, what, what does that mean? I don't understand. Not in a condition to respond to duty. Was it a physical condition? Was it a medical condition? Was it undre just undressed? I mean, what, what, what was going on? So I don't know about that. It says both officers were relieved of their duty and placed on administrative leave. Well, don't go to a hotel room and get caught fucking. And you won't, I mean, yeah. So it said in their report of their investigation, after consulting with state attorney, Federnick or whatever his name is, uh, determination was made that the conduct exhibited was beyond departmental policy violation and a criminal investigation into the incident was warranted. As a result of this comparison, comprehensive, I'm sorry, investigation by the detective division supervisors, they, they had arrest warrants were obtained for both officers Mayor Riley was immediately notified of the incident by the chief from the onset of the investigation was kept abreast of the investigation proceeded. Chief Thomas said of the incident and the investigation, of course you know, while I'm appalled at the behavior and conduct that was exhibited by these officers while in an on-duty capacity, I'm proud of the professional manner in which my patrol Supervisors in this department initiated blah, 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 you know, normal shit, you know, extremely disappointed in the apparent dereliction of duty. Well, it wasn't apparent if they were in their naked fucking. They didn't, anyway, you know, same thing, cheap, you know, blowing smoke. Anyway, the two officers turned themselves in. Uh, they were charged. This, this is where I get confused. All right. If anybody is on here live, was comment if they think they maybe know how or why. I mean, anyway, they were both charged with larceny, reckless endangerment, and risk of injury to a child. I'm going to say it again. They were both charged with larceny, reckless endangerment, and risk of injury to a child. Now, I'm confused. Was there? Did somebody bring their kid to work with them? Was there a kid in the room? What was the reckless endangerment? Larceny. I believe that the theft charge. They charged with larceny because they were in dereliction of duty because they were doing something on duty they wasn't supposed to be doing. And in you know the the child thing. I mean the the story don't. Don't elaborate at all on this matter. I mean, it just like leaves me confused as hell. They got caught fucking on duty. Fireable. 
Hell yeah. I mean, that's obvious, right? Got caught fucking on duty in the hotel. Got caught fucking on duty in the unit. Or at somebody's house. You, you gonna get fired. Don't fuck on duty. But to be charged criminally with these three fucking charges, I'm confused. They were both held on a $75,000 bond. It sounds like they're still in jail from this story so far. And that that's all of the story that I see. $75,000 bond. It's supposed to appear in court on February 16th. Like I said, I, I don't don't get it. Like I said, I understand. Fireable, yes. Uh, lose your post-certification, yes. Uh, you know, felony charges for fucking... I don't get it. I don't get it at all. I mean, I don't know what the larceny comes from because they were not doing what they were supposed to do, and they said they were stealing money. Cause they, I mean, that's just like a fucking Walmart employee uh, gets caught in a, the, the stock room playing fucking, you know, a game on their phone when they're supposed to be sweeping the floors or the stock in the shelf. You're going to charge them with larceny? Because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. No, you fire them. You fire them. The whole endangerment of a child thing. The only thing I can think of, like I said, because this story didn't give any more information on it. This story is like, the only thing I can think of is, were they trying to dispatch her to a call that involved the child and since because she was in the hotel room getting dick down that they're saying that this child that she was getting dispatched to this call with could have got hurt and so they're going to charge her with that because she wasn't doing what she was doing was what doing supposed to be doing i don't know that's confusing hell fucking connecticut's fucked up if you ask me all right you you fucking get in trouble for doing some shit like that that you're not supposed to be doing at work. And you're going to get fucking put in jail. They're going to arrest you criminally for it. And they wonder why they can't find fucking people to become cops anymore. It, they won't fucking arrest you for doing stupid shit. Were they wrong? Oh, yeah. Hell, fucking yeah, they were wrong. They are wrong all day long. Fired? Yeah. You know, fired? Sure. Totally agree with that. Fucking going to jail for getting caught fucking on duty. That's fucked up. That is some fucked up shit. What do y'all think? I think that's fucked up. I think it's fucked up. Don't be fucking on duty, anybody. Don't do it. You go to jail, Connecticut. Keep your dick in your pants, your coochies, and girly parts and stuff. Let me see this next story here. That uh, was a, an extension of the other one. Uh, I, I just had total mind blank out on y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> It happens sometimes with me. Oh, like I said, I did get my ticket writer. Unfortunately, I didn't get to use it this past week because they had something they had to do on it software-wise or something like that. I was told Friday, well, I was told Thursday that it should be done Friday. Uh, I didn't go out writing tickets on Friday because it was Friday but maybe tomorrow depending on the weather location we're in they're talking about you know overnight here might get some sleet or whatever and I don't know how wet it's going to be I know it's supposed to be cold as fucking coal miners ass tomorrow morning and it's kind of miserable out there writing tickets when you can't feel your fucking fingers or your toes or anything else on you because it's too damn cold. It fucking sucks ass. So 
So I'm, I'm if Scott's still here. He's gonna have to let me know what what uh that story is. I'm actually <laughs> in here trying to talk and rack my brain at the same time, multitask to. Oh, yeah. The people, if you're on Apple or something like that, Bam's over here talking to me. If y'all I'm not talking to myself, Bam is over here she, to remind me. If you're listening on Apple, Spotify, or any of the podcast networks, I am been do, I have been doing when I'm by myself, been doing Facebook Live. So if you hear me talking about somebody or making a comment or saying something that's just out of the blue, it's not that I ain't lost my mind, I'm either responding to something someone said on Facebook or something like that. So so if you're interested next time or you want to, you could go like us on Facebook and set your notifications up so on, when I go live it will alert you and you can come listen to me. Like I said, listen to me, look at Ice Pick because I'm still anonymous. So that's what you get right now. But at least I can respond back and forth. I have exhausted my stories that I have written down for this past week. I know it's sad. So sad. I didn't have a ton of them. Like I said, hopefully Tomcat, I had talked to Tomcat. And unfortunately, like I said, it wasn't him. It was me. Everything got messed up. We we're going to try to maybe record Friday or Saturday, which I didn't get a chance to do either. We actually reset up the uh, the clubhouse here, new table, uh, some new microphones and some stuff like that, which y'all can't see, but we did, which took almost all day Saturday to do. You don't realize how many fucking wires and all this shit that I had in here. Because uh, hopefully one day I will have more than one guest at a time because I have like four or five extra microphones and headphones and stuff. So I'm actually set up for a larger group of people that would be nice. So hopefully one day that will happen. I'm not going to drag y'all out. Like I said short week for me, not work wise, but just wasn't out writing a lot of ticket stuff. We had some some days of some funky weather and stuff like that, which always fucks up the ticket writing. For me anyway. No fun writing tickets in the rain. So if you know anyone, if you're friends with anyone that has any stories that would like to tell their stories, uh first responders, you know uh Firemen, that includes firemen, nurses, uh, hell, I even take a doctor, paramedics, uh, communications, uh, people, anything like that. And they want to tell their stories, uh, email me, uh, messages on Facebook or twer- twer- uh, I'm going to say twirler, <laughs> Twitter or parlor, as long as parlor's still up, right? I've been hearing rumors that it's about to get yanked down from everybody. But I don't talk political shit, so I'm not getting into it. But anyway, uh, message me on any of those platforms, and uh, we can have you as a phone-in guest if you're not in the South Louisiana area. Or if you would just have a good story and would like to hear it told by the non-articulate me, write your story down and email it to me or whatever, and I'll be more than glad to do my best to tell whatever story you have <laughs> set out there. And, of course, I will keep your name anonymous or anything like that so you don't have to worry about me out and you didn't need a department or anything like that. Funny stories, you know, or whatever. Some naked stories. Freebird, uh, you know, I love making Freebird jealous on them naked stories. So if you got any of those, just send them on in. I'd gladly read them. So like I said, if you have any of them, just, just hit hit me up, you know. If not, y'all just get me for a while. I'm still working. I will have some more guests come on, though. And uh, like I said, starting out this new year, 
You know, like I said, I don't do politics, but we all know what happened this past week. It's fucked up. Uh, I agree with some of it, and I agree with, don't agree with some of it also. So, y'all can figure that out yourself. I keep my own opinions to myself. So, uh, always uh, remember to smile because the ice man could always be behind you. I'm cranking up on the throttle. This is how legends are made.